Some folks have been asking about how to make the quilts, and I'm finally getting around to filming a video for it. Uh, so it's going to be a little in depth. I hope you don't get bored. Um, but this is this is how I do it. So first things first, I have an artboard. This one is 20 by 10 or 20 by 12 for the Glowforge uh, size bed. We're going to um, just make a 10 by 10 inch uh, quilt just as an example. Um, and I've also copy and pasted this picture over here because these are the colors I want to use. I want to do kind of a Christmassy feeling quilt or winter quilt. So, um, so what we're going to do first is we are going to go to view and we are going to show the grid and then we are going to go to view and we're going to snap to grid. This is so that when you are making your lines it's going to snap to the grid marks. Um, so let's grab the rectangle tool over here and we are just going to click anywhere in the space. I already have it set up 10 by 10 and I'm going to hit OK. So here's our square um, and I'm going to get it lined up on the grid and then I'm going to change the fill to none and the stroke to black and now we are going to start just drawing a quilt. So first thing we want to do is we're going to grab the line segment tool and let's just make some shapes. So let's see here. So uh, we will just grab the lines and let's do this because why not? And just so you know, I am going to show you how I sort it by color. So this isn't just one of the straight cuts. This is going to be sorted by color. So, all right, so there we go. Now let's, uh, quilts I like to have these little guys in them. So let's do this, this, and this, this, whoops. Let's grab him him down. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just continue to make these lines. I know it's not very exciting to watch me do this. Let's see here. All right. And we could, yeah, let's do this. Uh, well, let's, let's add one up here. Okay, so now let's just connect the lines. Why not? So we'll go like this, like that, that, and let's just go ahead and do it on the side. And then I'm going to show you a cool trick. So now that we've done this, let's hit V, which is this uh, selection tool. V is your shortcut. And we're going to just select this side right here. Now we are going to unselect, so hit shift and just click on this line this line and we don't need the middle line. We don't need those repeating, but we want to repeat these other lines here. So now we are going to right click and go to transform or you can go to object transform and we are going to rotate 90 degrees and we're going to hit copy. So we rotated 90 degrees and we are going to just grab it and we are going to pull it down to line up right there. We can do that again. We can say object, transform, rotate, copy, pull it down. And one more time.
and line it up. Okay, so here's our basic quilt. We just kind of threw this one together. It's fun, right? So now what we're going to do is we are going to, using the, again, the direct selection tool, V, we are going to select the whole thing, and we are going to go over here to the live paint bucket, which is a shortcut K. So hit your live paint bucket, and we're just going to click wherever. Okay, so from here, what we want to do is we want to use one of these colors. So we are going to use the eyedropper tool. We're going to grab a color. We're going to go back to our paint. And we are going to select which shapes we want to fill in. So let's fill in this shape, this shape, this shape, this shape. It's kind of fun. And then maybe let's do this one, this one, this one, this one. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and grab the eyedropper again. Let's do a different color. I don't really care for that color. Let's do, hmm, I just kind of want to do a white, but we can play with this. We'll see. Okay. Uh, maybe bring them out. So they're alternating. And then we could go here and here. So they're opposites. I always try to make sure that my colors don't touch each other. Okay, so let's eyedropper tool. Let's do this color right here. Let's see what that will look like. Oh wait, that's the color we've already used. So hmm. So we're going to fill in those colors. Let's do these right here here and then we still have the black and the darker gray I'm afraid the black is gonna be really overpowering yeah it is so let's not do I think the black's just going to be a little too harsh. What do you guys think? So if the black's a little too harsh, what we're going to do, we are going to go to the paint selection tool and we are going to hit shift and you're going to select all the black. Oops. And let's go ahead and go to the eyedropper tool and let's change it to the lighter gray. See how that looks. And at this point, I almost want a white. So I'm just going to grab, if you eyedrop anywhere on here, it'll pick up that color. So I have white selected right now. I almost feel like this should be white. Don't you? I don't know. So let's, let's try that. Let's go back to the selection tool. Let's make those white. Eyedropper. See how that looks. I see, I kind of like that better. And then we could fill this in with a different color, maybe the dark red. So let's go back over here. We're going to switch back to our live paint bucket. And let's do, hold on, let's do the dark red. Okay, so let's say that's our quilt. It's kind of fun. Um, next thing we want to do 
is we are going to go back to the direct selection tool V, select it all. We're going to go object, expand, and we are not going to expand stroke. We're going to expand fill and object, and we're going to hit OK. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go to object and we're going to ungroup. We want everything ungrouped. Double check and make sure sometimes you have to ungroup a couple times. Now we are ready to separate it by color. So we are going to create, we have one, two, three, four, five colors. So we're going to make five new artboards. We are going to make the artboards 19 by 10.85 because that's what my Glowforge can cut. And then we are just going to hit Control C, Control V. Um, I'm basically just copying my artboard over and over again. Another way you can do this is you can hit You can just go back to the artboard and draw a new one, or you can hit Option. I'm not sure what it is on PC, so I apologize. I'm using a Mac. Option will give you those double arrows. You can click, pull it over, release your mouse, and there's another copy. So that's a couple ways you can do that. So we're going to make one more. Okay, now what we're going to do with the direct selection tool, we're going to select one of the colors. So let's select the dark, the dark red. We're going to go to select same fill color and then we are just going to grab it and we're going to pull it over. And there's all of our dark red, right? Actually first, let's do this. Let's undo. First thing we want to probably do is make a copy of this and save this as a master. That way you know how your colors are sorted. So again, we're just going to click on it. We're going to hit the option and we're just going to pull down. Release your uh, mouse and there's your copy. Let's call this artboard so that, whoopsie. Let's call this artboard so we don't forget. Let's just call it master. What is it doing? Ugh. Sorry guys. Let's call this master so we don't um, pull from it. And then we can actually hit command two to lock it. Select it, command two, or you can go to object and you can lock. Okay, let's try this again. So now we are going to select the dark red we are going to select same fill color. We are going to grab it. We are going to pull it over. And we are going to call this dark red. Okay, let's do this again. Oh shoot, did it not? Hold on. Not bad. Dark red. It ended up labeling this one. That's okay. Okay. So now we're going to do the direct selection again. We're going to grab a red. We're going to select same, select same fill color. Pull it over. We are going to then label this one. Um, let's just call it light red. Okay. Do it again. We're going to grab this creamy color, select same fill color, pull it over. This one we're going to call light gray, I guess. Okay, select the gray, select same 
fill color. Whoopsie, what happened? Select same fill color. There we go. Pull it down. We're going to call this one dark gray. Shoot, I did again. Okay, dark gray. Uh, let's pull the white over and then we've got to rename the other one. I don't know where my extra box went. So we're just going to pull one over and make one. A 19 by 10.85. Okay. Direct selection. Grab your white. Select same. Oh, not stroke color. Definitely don't want stroke color because they're all the same. Select same fill color. Pull them over. And now we are going to call this one white. This one should be the light gray. Oh, interesting. I'm not sure what happened there. We're going to have to double check this right here. Okay. So we're going to just delete this. We don't need this artboard anymore. We've used it. We will go ahead and rename this one dark or light gray. Okay. So we have them all labeled. So now what we need to do is select all of them. We are going to fill none stroke black. So now what you can do is you can move your pieces. You can use this or you can you can you can move your your pieces to make them um, safe space or you can use a, a deep nest tool um, online uh, that will nest it for you and then also share the lines for you. Um, but either way, you get the idea. This is this is basically this is how I've been sorting my quilts. Um, and then once we have all of the pieces pulled over, you would just export the five different um, colors label and they're already labeled in the artboard so when you export them they'll already have the names in the fields um, and you cut them out so I guess that's about it uh, if you guys have any questions uh, let me know and I hope you found this tutorial helpful <laughs>